You know, recently, um, uh, recently, uh, Sage, Bennett the Sage, that is, uh, did a review, he did a review part of his, um, not so anime month, uh, theme for this month, and one of the things that he reviewed was, of course, SWAT Cats, the Radical Scar Trip. And to say that, uh, well, to, to, to say the fact that he's kind of a fan, he's basically very respectful of it, and you know what it what it accomplished during its run, um, would be saying something, or would be surprising. But he, you know, in a sense, you can tell Bennett uh, actually enjoys SWAT cats. You you can see that. Um, but one thing he didn't uh, mention, but I think he may have mentioned. Uh, but um, others have talked about, and although there hasn't been that much um, a return on their front, the creators several years ago, the original creators of SWAT Cats several years ago, came up with the idea to start a Kickstarter to bring SWAT Cats back. And SWAT Cats, I think it's going to be called SWAT Cats Revolution, is supposed to be like a continuation of where the original series left off. Um, and we've seen that with a lot of series recently. We've seen a lot of series kind of continue that, well, basically have been revived and have continued basically where the, other, where the original left off. Sometimes they'll take place a couple of years later. Sometimes they'll take place a few months later or right off the bat. Uh, we've seen that. In fact, if you look from a movie perspective, Incredibles 2, which came out this past weekend, is doing huge, huge uh, box office numbers. Incredibles 2 starts immediately where the first Incredibles left off. And that was like 14 years ago when the first Incredibles came out. <laughs> So, so basically, uh, that's kind of like, that's kind of the idea you're getting with SWAT Cats. The only thing we don't know exactly is it, is, is it going to be within the same time frame or a few months, maybe a year or so going to go by, a couple of years, we don't know. Uh, according to some videos and reports I've read, they're going to bring back the same characters, they're going to have a new animation style. Uh, that, well, well, a new animation style that's similar to the original, or the anime-influenced one of the second season. Um, as well as, uh, what, what did I say? Uh, I said they're going to have a new animation style that's similar and identical to the, mostly the anime-influenced one of season two. They're bringing back the original characters, all the original characters, all the villains, even some new villains, and some new characters as well. Um, uh, from what I've heard and read in recent, in some videos and articles, it's supposed to be more appealing towards the audience that grew up with it. So, in a sense, if you grew up with it, uh, from the very beginning in 1993, this is going to be a show for you. So about, I would say, I would say the moment it ever does come out and get released, um, you're going to get... That uh, that moment, you're, go you're going to get something that's more mature, more appealing to you. Like it still retains everything that made the original run good, the original version good, but it's going to be more of a mature, darker element. Um, now, the only thing that's kind of held it back that back is, even though it succeeded in obtaining its goal at Kickstarter to uh, allow the creators, the original creators of the show, to put together some uh, pitch pieces, some pi you know, some pieces that they could, some pitch pieces that they can use to pitch to networks and all that. But you know, as well as like a two-minute animation run teaser to kind of give them an idea, give these uh, potential uh, networks or services, an idea of what they're going to get, there has not been much return. Now, 
one thing I can think of is since this is more independent, this is more of an independent continuation that the original creators are probably taking their time. And of course the original creators, they have their own lives with families and all that, with their own families, sons, daughters, you name it, you know, wives, par you know, mothers, fathers, they have their own personal lives. So that's, so that's going to sometimes put something like this on the back burner. And that's a big difference. If this was something that was picked up right away by Cartoon Network or or um, Anime Network or uh, Crunchyroll or Funimation, uh, you name it, then there's no doubt uh, the original creators that, that the original creators would be right on this. They would have everything ready to go. They would be working on this almost day and night. But Seeing as though they don't have no real um, investor yet as far as network or services go, and right now they're working primarily on an idea of possibly creating episodes that they can air independently uh, through streaming services like maybe YouTube, Vimo, Amazon, Hulu, you name it. Um... You know, it kind of explains why it's taking so long, because like I said, being more independent, it gives them a little bit more free time to make sure that the scripts are, that the writing for this revival are, are good, there's no mistakes, and that whatever uh, animation that they get back with the redesign or rebooted design of the show, of the show and the characters themselves, um... They want to make sure everything is good, and this allows them to have enough time to do that. Um, and I know some people are kind of probably impatient. They're wondering, did we waste our money? Did we get ripped off? Did we get conned? And from what I've seen, I don't think we. I don't think that's the case with these guys. I think the very. I think the original creators are very passionate and very sincere in what they said. And I think basically the utilizing that money to basically make sure that in return we get the best product you know there's been a lot of stuff that a lot of projects movie animated shows you know animated web shows animated network shows live action shows live action web shows you get it you get kind of get the idea even movies theatrical or direct to video or streaming or web exclusive you know, video games, indies, major publishers, or publications. There's been a lot of projects that have started on Kickstarter and that was started on Kickstarter years ago and have yet to bear fruit because basically they're still being worked on. And the way people know this is the fact that those that supported the Kickstarter still get updated with information about what's going on, of what's the progress. And true, it may not always be like every day or every week that you get um, an idea of what's going on. But when you do, at least it's satisfactory. It's satisfying to at least know, okay, they're still working on this. But like I said, this being more independent right now, with the possible indication that they could, uh, they could create a YouTube channel or a Vimo channel or an Amazon channel and stream the series there. The revival there. Um, sorry about that. Um, but, you know, what was I saying? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> but, you know, basically, you know, when it comes to these kind of projects, especially the more independently uh, looked at, and there's no real hurry just yet to get it out there because there's no real, um, interest or buyer or you know what have you from anybody like Cartoon Network or whoever then if your main focus then turns to hey maybe we can do web exclusive stuff like that you are allowed to pace yourself you're allowed to take your time in doing so and that's I think what the creators of SWAT Cats is doing they want to they now see, okay, we got a little bit more time on our hands. We're not so rushed. The main part, uh, the main objective, the main goal right now is probably to get it onto 
YouTube Red perhaps or just YouTube period or sites or a video streaming site like that to finally get it showcased to the world and um, to me the creators like I said earlier seem to be more of a the kind of people that will give quality back for the support and I think that's what they're doing I think that's what they're taking the time and doing so um, exactly where I think it's going to finally uh, air or show up I think it's going to most likely be YouTube um, I think it's a bit of a thank you thank you I, th I my honest opinion is I think if they're going to thank everybody for supporting it and bringing the revival back I think the most the best way to do that is to make it free on YouTube don't go the YouTube red route um, if you, I mean, if they want to go the YouTube red route and everything, fine, no problem. <laughs> but I think if you just go for free, you know, do it for free and everything, I think, um, it'd be more beneficial and people will be actually more appreciative of that because then they don't have to worry about paying out a subscription fee every month just to see these episodes. You know, the, they'll be able to, <coughs> um, They'll be able to tune in um, every week at a certain time on a certain day and see them without any problem. Uh, a good example of that is uh, Hasbro. Hasbro and DHX Media have uh, Quest Your Girls shorts. Um, they have the Quest Your Girls shorts on, YouTube, on their YouTube channel, the free YouTube channel and not YouTube Red. Because they know that if it wasn't for the fans, they wouldn't be where they are, and this is their way of thanking them. So, to me, like I said, I think that's the most logical step. Uh, next step, uh, next step, when they all have everything ready to go, as to when they're going to debut and showcase uh, these episodes. I think whenever we get an announcement, whenever we finally get an announcement, it's going to be very soon. Um, I, I don't know if anybody knows this, but this is the 25th anniversary year of SWAT Cats. I mean, it's the 25th anniversary of Sat AM, too, Sonic Sat AM. Let's not deny that. And, and a few other shows, but this, as far as, if you're a SWAT Cats fan, this is the 25th anniversary. And I can't think of any better way of announcing or celebrating that 25th anniversary than announcing at either San Diego Comic Con or New York Comic Con, or one of the animation, anime co uh, conventions in between during the summer, I can't think of a better way to celebrate that than to announce uh, the impending debut, basically, you know, when it's going to be, uh, uh, when, it's a, when it's officially going to debut, uh, when it, where people can actually see it, and so forth. So, um... <laughs> I, I, would, I would expect something between San Diego Comic-Con and the rest of the year, mostly maybe New York Comic-Con and some of the, like I say, the other animation and anime conventions uh, in between for us to finally hear about, you know, the future of SWAT Cats Revolution. And I think this is where we're going to finally get a better idea of, like I say, where it's going to air and when it's going to show up, when it's going to debut. So I think fans are going to be really appreciative of that. And um, honestly, I think that if uh, if this succeeds, if SWAT Cats Revolution succeeds, it's going to open the door for a lot of poss other possibilities as far as the SWAT Cats franchise is concerned. Um, you know, a lot of people say that Injustice 2 could really benefit from a bigger roster. I mean, when the announcement of Ninja Turtles showing up in Injustice 2 was made, the roof nearly blew off everybody's home and any, uh, you know, any place, any place else that, you know, fans were at when the announcement was made. So to me, I think this could open the door for something like that to happen because there's no doubt we'll probably get an Injustice 3 video game. So I think the best solution to that, Injustice-wise, is not just to bring back all the you know, characters, DLC and non-DLC uh, from Injustice 2. But I think the most logical sense after that is to finally... Like I said, and I'm sorry my finger hit the mic there. Uh, but I think the most logical sense would be 
opening the door and letting something like SWAT cats come in. I mean, can you imagine how fans will react if NetherRealms makes the announcement that SWAT cats is joining the fray? I, I don't think, I don't think you guys for anything better than that. So, so when when I when I look at this revival, that obviously it's still coming because we haven't heard no we haven't heard anything about oh it's been cancelled oh it's not going to happen that, that, that we haven't heard anything like that so um, when, when I hear so until we hear something in that category I still have my hopes I, I still have my thoughts and like I said I think the real reason is because since it's now more independently you know um, focused on and there's no real pressure no real hurry just yet to get it out there you know, they're going to take their time to try to give us the best product in return for the support that we gave them. But when I look at this Wattcats revolution, I take in consideration what everybody says it's going to be like. You know, it's going to be darker. It's going to be more mature. It's going to take place um, as a continuation of the series, of the original run. It's going to appeal more to that older demographic in a sense that grew up with it and, and such. Um, when, when I look at, when I place all that together and I, and I look at the possibilities that we have, the possibilities are endless. Um, you know, I look at the fact that one, one thing that really kind of bothered, I think a lot of fans is here you had a character in, in Callie Briggs that was very close with the SWAT cats, obviously very close with the alter egos. Um, and the same with uh, the season two character, uh, Felina Farrell. Um, wh one thing that bothered a lot of folks was how could Callie, of all characters, and even later on Felina, of all characters, not kind of place two and two together? You know, it's like, how can they not kind of get the idea that, wait a minute, you know, these guys look very identical to two people we know, have similar attitudes to two cats we know. So, I, I don't know. I mean, I understand I mean, I mean, understand the reasoning they didn't figure it out is because it keeps that mysterious intrigue alive and makes the unveiling, the, revel, the reveal down the line much bigger um, and more important. So, you know, I, I'm hoping that... Because here's what I'm hoping for in this revival. I'm hoping... Because this is supposed to take place within the same continuity, the same, obviously, I guess, the same timeline and all that. The only difference is they're going to upgrade the technology um, to be more modernized. So it might be a couple years, I don't know. Um, again, it might be within the same, you know, time time frame. Um, but when when I look look at this possible revival and what I would like to see, I would... Honestly, I would like to see Callie Briggs finally finding out who the SWAT cats are. Finding out who they are behind the mask. And true, it could cause a little tension, a little drama. Uh, but I want her and then inevitably Felina Farrell to find out. And so that way, you know, you could have some kind of like, okay, you know, it's a little bit dramatic. You know, both both female characters will feel like, hey, you know, why didn't you tell us and all that. Do you not trust this? And, you know, it's going to it would work itself out in the end. But basically it opens the door because, you know, Callie at least knows now, along with Felina later on, who the SWAT cats really are. And she has a better understanding of, okay, I get why you're doing this. I get why they're doing this and they're justified in doing this. And think about it this way, her being deputy mayor, possibly the future mayor, it gives her more of an edge, more of an advantage to try to um, take this sentence, this dischargement, this dishonorable discharge that uh, Commander Farrell put on Jake and Chance and have it cleaned off the slate, just have it removed as if it never happened. Because, you know, she would have a now better understanding, even along with Felina Farrell, would have a better understanding as to why uh, the SWAT cat, well, you know, why Jake and Chance are doing what they're doing as Razor and T-Bone, the SWAT cats. It also opens the door as well to doing something that I felt really needs to be done. And they could have capitalized on, on this, and they probably were going to capitalize on it later on.
You know, they probably were. And what I'm talking about is, I think they, I think basically this could open the door if they go this route it, with the Revolution series, or the Revolution continuation, of, and like I said, to go the route of finally having the female, the main female characters find out who the SWAT cats are up behind the mask. Um, I think this opens the door, this could really open the door, because one thing a lot of people kind of are back and forth about is the whole female empowerment, the whole, you know, what we, you know, men can, you know, women can do what the men do, if not better. You know, the whole situation like that. <laughs> and I don't know if they were planning to do this had the, series, the original run continued. But I think, honestly, the door opens. The door is going to be opened with the possibility that you could finally give us female SWAT cats. And what better choices than Callie and Felina? And I think it would be great because you could do an episode... To where the SWAT cats are incapacitated, either they're jailed or they're knocked out, or, so, or something happens, and the city needs the SWAT cats, needs some kind of SWAT cat team to help them, or to protect them, and maybe even find out what's going on. And thus, this could lead into Felina and Callie already, you know, and this, you know, already knowing who the SWAT cats really are, going over there, noticing something's up, maybe some kind of. You know, no, noticing that something's up, maybe noticing that the place has been trashed or something, and deciding, you know what, this city needs SWAT cats. Let's give them SWAT cats, and maybe at the same time try to find out what happened to our friends. And there you go. You could have female SWAT cats, and you give them some unique names. Um, I don't know what you what they would be called, but they can have unique names, you know. Uh, but it would open the door. It would really open the door for that opportunity to happen. Um. You also have Commander Farrell. Uh, his main goal is always to find out who the SWAT cats are. And he could be kept in the dark for quite some time. But here's where I think things could really pick up, especially later on in the, in the, in the, in the, in the Revival's run. In the, revolu in the Revival's run. Here's what, I think could re here's what I think could happen. You could have some kind of scuffle occur. And... Something happens during this scuffle involving Farrell and the SWAT cats. And the SWAT cats, well at least one of them, they get the mask knocked off by accident. Like, Farrell gets knocked down, he's grabbing onto something, and he pulls off the mask of, let's say, for, the, for, this, for this moment, I think it should be T-Bone. Most obviously, that would be the choice. T-Bone, uh, Chase. Uh, Chase, you know, T-Bone. Or Chance, I should say. Chance, you know, T-Bone. Have, like, a moment where Pharaoh would fall back, grab the mask of Chance, T-Bone, rip it off. And then after whatever caused the scuffle to happen, you could have Pharaoh look down at the policy that has him has one of the masks. As he's, you know, as Pharaoh's getting up, you can have him look up, have him look at his hand, see he's got one of the masks of the SWAT cats. And then you could just have it pulled up. You could have him holding that mask. And then as his hand holding the mask lowers down, he looks up. And then, oh, man, he notices that it's, cha it's cha uh, Chance, uh, Chance Furlong, T-Bone, the one that he uh, discharged. And then he could also put two and two together. Wait, and then by knowing, seeing that it's Chance, he can also kind of figure that, wait a minute, Razor is T-Bone. Razor, Razor is Jake. And there you go. And what a moment that could be. The tensions could fly. You can even try to maybe set up a physical fight between the two. And maybe have some kind of explanation. Like, you know, Ferlo, you know, Pharaoh could be like, you know, he could be angry and everything that these guys have defied. Uh, his orders defied the probation or the sentence. And you could have chances get up, get right on him and be like, hey, you put us in this position because you wanted to take the glory for something that you didn't need to take care of. You didn't need to, you have no business in trying to steal glory from. Or something like that. So, you know, there you go. Um, I, I, but again, I would set something like that. I would set a moment like that up for like later on in the, in the uh, revival's run, in the revolutions run maybe like towards the end if you're only going to do like one season 
I would do that towards the end because it makes it it makes it more impactful. Like this whole time, the SWAT cats that that this whole time, the very team, the very two vigilantes that he's been trying to you know take down are actually the two enforcer pilots that he dishonorably discharged for disobeying his orders. I mean, these are moments I would like to see. I, I would really like to see them. I would also like to see some of the unfinished stories that they had planned for the original run uh, become reality here in Revolution. Now, of course, this being possibly a a revival aimed at the older demographic, it's going to have a PG rating or a TV PG rating on it. So... I would expect at least we're going to get a little bit of what we had in Season 2 and somewhat in Season 1. And that is a lot of characters dying. And it could be my, and it could be just, you know, extras, you know, char- extra characters, you know, background characters and all that. But I think to really uh, put this series over the edge, you need to have a major character death. You need to have a major character death here. Well, semi-major. And... I can't think of any other character that they should kill off, not just because of old age, but because of the fact that you know that had they probably continued this series on, they were going to go that route anyway. Um, I would have them kill off Professor Hackle. And again, I feel that they probably would have done that had the original series continued. But, because, you know, he is a mid-major character. He does play an important role in the series. And everybody, you know, obviously... You know, and everybody obviously from um, Callie and Felina and Commander Farrell and even Mayor Manx are very close with him. And even the SWAT cats are close with him. What better idea? What better, uh, you know, what a, what a choice. What a great dramatic moment that would be. A, sad, a very sad, emotional, dramatic moment to take that character out of the equation. It would be just, it would, it would, it would be, it, you know, it may, you know, some may say, well, it won't be as impactful. If they, if they plan to do something like that, right, if they plan to take the time and give us quality, I think it can be. I think it can be done right. I think, I think, you know, if they plan to do something like that in the revival, and sorry, my thumb hit the mic there, but if they plan to do something like that in the revival, I, I think it could work. I, I really do. And... I think anybody listening to this would agree. Um, I think, I also think that finally we need to address uh, the elephants in the room. And that is obviously the attraction, the romantic, flirtatious attraction that you have between, (coughs) excuse me, between the SWAT cats and the two female leads. Uh, Because you take a look at fiction and all that, and apparently it's very obvious, and you even got some hints thrown in there and all that, um, that there's something between uh, T-Bone, Chance Furlong, and Felina Farrell. And what what irony would that be? What ironic irony would that be for Commander Farrell's niece to be in love with one of his most disdained... Um, adversaries of rivals and in this case one of the rogue uh, enforcer pilots vigilante pilots that he dishonorably discharged what ironic irony and you know what when I think about it I think honestly that's what they were heading towards with this series had the series originally continued and then of course you have Callie and Jake you know Razor so you know, you just got to address that elephant in the room. It's It's got to be addressed as and everything. And if they were planning to bring back Turmoil, who was obviously being built up to be a massive female antagonist villain, imagine the showdown or the, the fight between her and Felina. Muddy written all over that, if you catch my drift. But yeah, overall, when I looking back on it now during this 25th anniversary year, which I don't think anybody knows about, looking back on it, you know, what we, looking back on it now, what we got with SWAT Cats, the Radical Squadron, nothing, I don't think really 
no one could say that they saw something like this from Hanna Barbera, you know, becoming such a cult hit, uh, having such a cult following up to this day, and becoming such a massive hit because it differentiated from any other. Because it, along with Johnny Quest and Pirates of Dark Water, differentiated itself from any other Hanna Barbera related. Um, uh, product at that time. I mean, it, uh, here's the thing: if you grew up in the '60s, and you had the Herculoids, you had Space Ghost, you know, and all them, um, and all those series. If you had the Herculoids, you had Space Ghost, and all that. When you look at a series like SWAT Cats, and you look at another series like Johnny, The World Adventures of Johnny Quest. And, and like you said, even Pirates of Dark Water. And you kind of get a sense that back, that what Hanna Barbera was trying to do in the 90s was revive that darker, edgier animation style or animated series that they went for, in a sense, back in the 1960s with Space Ghost, with the Herculoids, with the original Johnny Quest, just to name a few. So... To me, I think, honestly, nothing will ever duplicate what SWAT Cats did. I mean, the mid-90s, let's be, let's be truthful, guys. Network or syndicated, any series that had animomorphic characters in it as the leads, not only were they surprise hits, but they showed that animomorphic shows can get dark and serious if need be. They can still stay comedic, but they can get dark and serious and mature at times if need be. I mean, heck, Wild, Wild West Cowboys and Moo Mesa was like that at times. Not all the time, but there were times it was. You know, Bike and Mice from Mars, the original run, same thing. And heck, they brought them back recently, and that was a hit. So SWAT Cats, I think, can make the same transition, you know, in a revi- with its revival. Um, but again, you know, like I said, I don't think anybody could really top what SWAT Cats, the Radical Squadron did, as far as shows uh, distributed by a company like Hanna Barbera um, can do back then. I mean, you take a look at some shows today, and some shows pretty much as good as they might be and as mature as they might get and dramatic, of, you know, pale in comparison to what SWAT Cats did. SWAT cats today can fit right into what we have, if not more so. So, yeah. Overall, you know, when I look at the revival, I still believe it's coming. I don't believe we've been conned. I don't believe people have been scammed. I believe it's coming. But because of the fact that right now the creators are in a situation to where there is no real hurry, they have the funds stored away, saved up to make this happen, they realize, okay, there is no real hurry because there is no distributing network uh, or stream, no official network or streaming uh, service or channel that needs the series right away. And because there's none of that right now, they could take their time and you know make sure that what they give us finally is something that we could say yes. We spent our money well on the Kickstarter to help these guys bring the series out because they give or bring the series back because they're giving us something good in return. Um, so yeah, again, I, I do expect we'll probably get an announcement this year between the summer convention se- season. San Diego, I think we probably San Diego Comic Con next month. I think would be probably the best place for them to do that. In between that and all the other conventions and New York Comic Con. This summer would be the best option to, for them to make an announcement, but I think San Diego would probably be the most logical one to go with. So, and probably the biggest stage to do it on. So, uh, but that's really all I'm going to say, folks. Let me know what you guys think uh, about what I had to say. What do you want to see? What do you expect to see in the SWAT Cats uh, Revolution revival when it finally does become a uh, reality, in which I still believe it will be? And do you agree with anything of what I said of why it's taking so long, you know, and stuff? Let me know what you guys think down in the comments section. I'd like to hear from you. And 
don't forget this is the 25th anniversary so if you got any 20, 25th anniversary ideas or thoughts or memories let us know about let me know about it in the comment section and that's all I'm going to really say folks so till next time god bless take care i am out